how to become a 3D visualizer if you have no experience in design or IT related fields, where to start learning, what kind of computer do you need and how long will it take. My name is Kate and I have been working in commercial visualization for over 8 years. I am here to answer all your questions. Let's get started. A 3D visualizer creates images that help sell various products, ranging from interior and architectural products to small objects. Clients use renders for presentation, advertising campaigns, or simply as visual previews for their projects. So, you've decided to become a visualizer. Where do you start learning? There are a few different paths. Self-learning. This is a long and challenging journey, but it's possible. Taking online courses. A convenient option, but keep in mind that courses are usually designed for a specific level of experience with the software and computers in general. In-person training. This is can be highly effective, but often comes with a high price tag. Before investing in courses or a powerful PC, I recommend trying a free lesson on YouTube, following a watch and repeat approach for beginners. This will help you determine whether you actually enjoy this field. Many beginners make the mistake of buying expensive courses right away, only to quick later, wasting both time and money. So it's best to test the waters before committing to full-scale training with professionals. Also, be sure to check out my previous video, where I break down the pros and cons of exterior and interior visualization, so you know what to expect. What's the problem with most courses? Courses can be extremely useful and help you master the profession faster, but there is a catch. They don't always match your skill level. For example, you might buy a course on setting evening lighting only to find a 5-hour boring video covering just the basics. The instructor skips half the features, saying that's too completed for now. Not the best experience, right? The opposite can happen too. Imagine a course catching your attention with a beautiful promo, making you think it'll explain everything in detail. But once you start, the instructor talks as if you already know everything. You end up constantly googling terms just to keep up, spending your whole day watching YouTube tutorials instead of actually learning from the course. That's why you should always check whether a course truly suits your needs before purchasing. One major red flag is when the description claims the course is for everyone, from beginners to pros. In reality, this usually means it's helpful for no one. Beginners will struggle, while experienced users will find it boring. How long does it take to learn? Courses can vary in length. You might take a short master class lasting just a few hours with an additional 1-2 days to practice and refine what you've learned. Or you could enroll in full-fledged program lasting 2-3 months, uh, where you develop multiple skills through hands-on training. And of course, there are many options to between. But one thing I can tell you with 100% certainty. Your learning doesn't end with the course. A course will give you a solid foundation, teach you the basics, and help you create one or two portfolio pieces. However, to start working professionally, you'll need to keep practicing, tackle more complex tasks, and continuously improve your skills. That's why I believe it's better to measure projects not by time, but by the number and quality of completed projects. On average, a beginner who dedicates all their time to learning can complete their first project in one or two weeks. If you are only learning in the evenings and on weekends, it'll take longer. But once you've completed at least eight diverse and preferably complex projects, you can confidently say that you've learned something and are ready to start working commercially. How to learn effectively the answer is simple. Take on ambitious projects. This applies both to courses and self-study. If you are serious about mastering 3D visualization, don't choose tiny spaces or overly simple designs. It's a waste of time. Yes, these projects are easier and quicker to complete, but they won't expose you to the real challenges of the job. If you start with a small bedroom featuring a minimal design, you are missing out a valuable learning experience. The main reason people do this? 
lack of confidence. Let me clarify. Your first projects will be slow and most likely they won't look great. That's completely normal. Don't be embarrassed or afraid of this. What matters most is using your time efficiently and learning how to ask the right questions, especially when you're still figuring out what exactly you need to know. If you take on challenging projects and execute them as well as you can, over time you will. Master key tools much faster, learn how to research information and solve problems, build a strong portfolio, and develop skill to a commercial level. Don't choose the easy path. A difficult project will push you further, even if it takes longer to complete. What kind of computer do you need? The short answer. The more powerful, the better. More specifically, the 3 Max Plus Corona Render combination relies on the CPU for rendering calculations. The more powerful your processor and RAM, the faster your render will be. The larger your RAM capacity, the more stable your scene will be, especially when working with large, highly detailed projects and during start rendering. How to choose hardware? For CPU performance in rendering, Cinebench benchmarks are a great reference. Compare results and choose a laptop or desktop that fits your budget. Here are some guidelines. Ryzen 5600X – a solid entry-level option for comfortable work. Ryzen 3900X or higher – professional great performance, allowing you to work comfortably even with multiple renders running in the background. Laptop or desktop – you can learn and work on a laptop, but for serious productivity, a desktop is the better choice. Here is why. More power for the same price. Dual monitors, even budget ones, are far more convenient than a single laptop screen. Easier upgrades for long-term performance. More comfortable workstation. Ergonomic chair plus full-sized keyboard reduces fatigue. If you'd like a detailed video on building a PC for 3D visualization, let me know in the comments. So, you've completed your training and built your portfolio. What's next? How much can you earn and where do you find work? First, let's be clear, salaries vary greatly depending on your region. In CIS countries, Eastern Europe, South America and some parts of Asia, salaries can range from $400 to $2,500 per month. In the USA, Canada, Western Europe or Australia, earnings tend to be higher, typically ranging from $1,500 to $5,000 per month. The easiest way to understand the job market in your region is to check the most popular job websites in your country. Architecture firms and design studios regularly post job openings. From there, start applying, go through interviews and land your first job. You can work in an office or remotely, both of which are great for gaining experience and understanding the industry from the inside. A more challenging path is freelancing. You'll need to constantly search for clients, which takes up a lot of your time. To succeed, you must constantly update your portfolio, post your work on freelance platforms and actively maintain your social media presence, all of which require significant effort. Speaking of portfolios, that's a whole separate topic. If this video gets a lot of engagement, I'll definitely make an episode dedicated to how to build a strong portfolio. I hope I've answered your questions. If you're still excited about becoming a 3D visualizer, join our Patreon, where I regularly share lessons on advanced lighting, materials, scripts and plugins I use in my work. Also, we'll soon be launching our Telegram community, where you can always ask questions and get help from like-minded learners. Good luck and learn easily with soft school.